Hey everybody, Chad Van Herp here, your personal trainer with Roadrunner Sports. And today we're gonna delve into a topic that I had to deal with firsthand with one of my clients last week. And in getting to the bottom of the problem, which was plantar fasciitis. And I'm sure a lot of you have known someone that suffered from that or suffered from it yourself. I, re I realized in helping this person, he was looking at the plantar fascia as being the problem itself. And so oftentimes we do that. We look at the painful area and we assume that that's the problem. Well, you guys, that's not the way the body works. The body's a kinetic chain, and we always have to look at the joints above and below the problem to determine what the true cause is. So I figured in helping him solve his plantar fasciitis pain, I would share the same information with you, and hopefully all of you can benefit from this too and avoid this painful problem in the future. Okay, the first thing I want to start with is just a quick overview of exactly where the plantar fascia sits and how the ankle alignment is going to be so important in determining what kind of loads are placed on the plantar fascia. So the plantar fascia connects to the heel and then up here into the ball of the foot stretches down across the bottom of the foot. Now that muscle is really good at assisting you and supporting your arches as you're standing around, but it's really bad at propelling you. Okay, if you're using anything, if you're using the plantar fascia to help pull you down the road on your runs, it's not made for that. It's just gonna be a matter of time until that muscle tissue breaks down and now you've got that stabbing heel pain or feeling like the underside of your foot's being ripped apart, which is essentially what's happening. Now the important thing to understand is that as we run, this heel bone, your calcaneus, needs to be able to slide out to the side. And when it does that, when it rolls out, this foot becomes very rigid and it becomes a great lever for propelling you down the street with each stride on your run. Now if that calcaneus can't turn the way it's supposed to turn and you can't create that rigid lever, now the only thing that's going to produce force and stability for you is the plantar fascia. And again, that is not what that muscle is made for. And after the hundreds and thousands of steps that you take with each run, it's just a matter of time until we see that muscle tissue breakdown. So what we're going to show you first is a great stretch to ensure that your calves are loose enough to allow that calcaneus to slide out and produce that rigid lever we're looking for. Okay, the first exercise we're going to address deals with the length and the tension in your calves. Again, we got to make sure that calcaneus can slide out. We got to make sure that calves are loose, but we have to make sure that they're loose in a way that's specific to the sport you're doing, which in this case, we're really talking about running. And that's whether it's long distance running or sprinting, it's going to be the same issue. Okay. And so what we're going to do is go into a simple calf stretch and we're going to lean up against a wall. You're going to step one foot way back behind you. And first of all, you're going to try to determine, do your calves feel tight? Most likely they do. Okay. And if you've got the tight calves, you've got to sink into the stretch because this is most likely your culprit. Now, as you're leaning into the stretch, you may think, sure. Yeah, I've done this stretch before. Okay. I'll do it with my knees straight, locked out and get the gastrocnemius and I'll bend the knee, get the soleus. Okay. I know a lot of you have done this stretch before, but we're going to do a little twist on it. And as you're extended back with one leg leaning into the stretch, I'm going to have you reach the front leg across your body. As you reach across your body, we're going to put that direct line of pull on the calf muscles that are really limiting that calcaneus from sliding out. Okay. This is going to give you the freedom of motion, the range of motion that you need to get the angle into a rigid lever position. So that plantar fascia is not taking the brunt of all the force production and propulsion responsibilities. Okay. So the second issue that you may need to address here is hip weakness or hip instability. If you've been doing the calf stretch regularly and you're not finding that you're getting any relief, or if you tested the calf stretch to begin with and you didn't notice there was much tightness at all, your problem may have to do with weak glute medius muscles. Okay. And as we covered in a previous video, if the glute medius is weak on one side and it can't stabilize your body, the hip is going to translate out laterally. Okay. And again, we want to make sure the foot that's going to be doing the propelling here is turned out slightly. Well, if the opposing glute medius is weak and the hips translate, you can see that as this hip kicks out to the left, this back foot that's getting ready to propel off 
is going to roll onto that inside arch and that is not where we want it. Again, that will not create a rigid lever and that's going to force the plantar fascia to be doing all the work and you're going to run into the same problem over and over again. So we're going to cover an exercise now to make sure that we can shore up the glute medius and keep that nice and strong to avoid this misalignment. So if you find that a weak glute medius is most likely your culprit, you're going to want to employ this exercise. And what we're talking about is a basic side plank. A lot of people think it's a core exercise, and it is, but it's also amazing at strengthening the glute medius and shoring up any weaknesses there. All you do is lie on your side, make sure your elbow is planted on the ground direct, directly below your shoulder, you're going to keep your feet stacked on top of one another, and you're going to keep a slight bend at your knee. Now slowly push your hips up off the floor by driving down through your feet and elbows. Hike the hips up as high as you can and really try to lock it in and stabilize at the top. You're looking to hold about 30 seconds to a minute here. If you find that that's easy for you, you can move to a, a simple progression from the same position where you're actually doing a hip hike. You're going to let the bottom hip drop to the floor. You'll feel a slight stretch across your hip and your oblique and then you're going to pike up and try to feel a nice strong contraction. You can aim for about 20 reps of those and that should be sufficient. If even at that point you feel like you could go a little bit harder and challenge yourself a little bit more, then a third progression would be the side plank with the top hip lifting up into this starfish position. This really forces both the bottom hip and the top hip or those glute medius muscles to work extremely hard and again, your goal here should be about a 30 second to one minute hold. Okay, the third issue that you may need to address or recognize in how it relates to your plantar fasciitis may be trunk rotation. Okay, as we walk and we run, there's a natural rotation that happens in the trunk. And that rotation is dependent on these upper back muscles or these thoracic extensor muscles in your back. Those are gonna be responsible for rotating you. Well, so often, because our posture's bad and we end up hunched over, we lose that extension of the spine and therefore we lose our ability to rotate. Now, just like a weak glute medius can change the angle of the foot, so can anti-rotation or the ability to not rotate. So you can see if I can rotate one way, okay, you're gonna have that foot collapsing in again. We don't want that, okay? So it's great if you can rotate one way, that's fine. But if you lack the ability to rotate the opposite way and pull yourself out of that position, then you're gonna have a misalignment. So it's very, very important that you're doing exercises that emphasize thoracic extension so that you maintain the ability to rotate properly so the ankle can move in and out of that inversion and eversion position. So there we have it, you guys. There's three reasons why you may be dealing with plantar fasciitis. And I hope some of you guys and girls that suffer from this problem found that this video was helpful. Again, you wanna go through, you wanna evaluate what the problem may be, whether it's your calves, your hips, or lack of extension in the spine, and do the exercises that correlate with those problems to make sure that you can get yourself some relief. As always, make sure you click the like button, Leave us your comments, any ideas for topics to cover in the future, go ahead and leave that below. And we'll be sure to try to get to it in the days, weeks, and months ahead as we keep going with these videos. You guys, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back out on the roads.